Our week at the Valley of Fire Dispersed Camping is at an end. Finally, we're excited to pack up. It's travel day for us, and that means we're gonna go dump the tanks. We're gonna continue to have Chris do the uh, packing up and the hitching up and the driving i'm getting a little bit better and i probably could drive if i absolutely had to but this way i can still recover like i should be and chris can continue to learn her steps and get that habit down that's right repetition 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 slide in check the tire chocks auto hitch back up the truck i'm gonna put these in the truck because aaron says he can just use the boot today so we are making progress everywhere this is really nice. This is my first time walking outside with just the boot on. And two and a half weeks later, All right, I'm gonna push auto hitch. feeling pretty good. And we're off to Valley of Fire for the second time. Today we're headed to another boondocking spot on the other side of Valley of Fire State Park. And this is called Sand Mine Road, I think it is. And hopefully it is as beautiful and wonderful as the spot we just came from. I have a feeling it's going to be even more beautiful. A quick stop into the park first so we can dump the tanks, fill the water, as well as do a little bit more sightseeing in that beautiful place. It's $10 to get into the park if you're a resident of Nevada and 15 for us, right? Yep, that's right well worth the price of admission in this beautiful place. Oh yeah. Campsites are only 10 bucks, that's cheap. Oh, that's super cheap. Yeah, 10 bucks is nice. It's the same guy. Awesome, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good one. Sounded all positive. Yeah, it was pretty good. He's, he's a nice guy, it was Did the same. Did he remember you? He didn't remember me, but I remembered him. Yeah, it seems super uh, RV friendly here. Yeah, it is. He said big rigs come in all the time. Nice. All the time, he said. Nobody in line. Oh. Nice and easy. Yeah, it was busy here the other day. Yeah, it was. So many of you know we've had the Zero G drinking water hose for many years in the van, and we still have that actually, but that was a 25 footer, and we just upgraded to a 50 footer because we have a little bit more length and it's already came in handy twice because the water fills over here and then a lot of times the water fills on the other side of the, the vehicle like that, so. Is that standard for that to be on the opposite side of everything else? I don't know, I think uh, I think it could vary, but. On the van it was all on the same side. Yep, I think some have it there. I don't know, they, I think they put them in different spots, but these hoses have been great We've, like I said, had ours for over two years, no issues with it. it and they. brand new still. Well, that one is the brand new one. Uh, <laughs> that looks brand new because oh, it is. One, the other one does not look this new. No, it's faded a different color, but it still looks really, really good. So these hoses are great and it's much better than fighting the big white hose. I don't know. It's just nice that we have 75 feet of hose now and it just takes up very little storage at all. We're still liking these filters as well. We've been using these AquaQuest for a while because they're a little bit cheaper than the Camco for like a two pack of them and they seem to work just the same. Excellent. Dumping with a view. Okay, I'm already extremely uncomfortable because my hair is not in a ponytail and huh. my jacket's on, so I'm like super irritable right now. But I am going to do the nice tip that so many people tell me to do, to run a little bit of gray water through, 
first as a test to make sure everything's hooked up right. So if there's an incident, it's with gray water and not with black water. And then you stop that and then you do the black. And also by lubricating it with the gray water, that means less gunk from your black tank gets stuck on the inside of your stinky because it's lubed with the gray water. And I thought, oh, those are really good tips. Thanks for looking out for me. I wonder why Aaron didn't give me those tips. I never thought of that because when you do the gray valve, it comes rushing out in such a force that I thought jamming the gray lever back in might cause an issue. You ready for some gray? That's the gray. Okay, just open it maybe a little bit. like it works okay back to the black okay back to the black to black just like Amy Winehouse I love how you step away at that point okay we're getting closer now I'm going to dump this trash there's dumpsters conveniently right there and they're getting full but there's still plenty of space in there so it's really nice to have everything in one area and if you have garbage facilities at your dump tank station, it makes the $15 fee even more better because you can just take care of everything at once. 45 minutes later to fill that big old fresh tank with a little trickle on the garden hose. That was horrible. Good thing I wasn't holding my breath. Yeah. It's a good thing also, we pulled in here, you know, just before one o'clock. And I was starting to get hungry and I said, I'm gonna have myself a little protein shake just so I don't get hangry and miss my lunch. And I'm really glad I did that before this event because one, I knew that I wouldn't feel like doing it after dumping the tanks. That's like gross, I'm not to that level yet. And two- You don't wanna eat a sandwich while you're dumping the tanks? No. Multitasking people. <laughs> and two, had I would have known it would have taken 45 minutes Oh, for sure. I, there would have been no hesitation. So I'm glad I did that. Yeah, everything takes longer in an RV, it seems. It always has. Even mm -hmm. in the van, things took longer. So that's what's kind of nice. You just got to embrace the pace and uh, enjoy it. Because... There's nowhere else I'd rather be than right here at this stink pit with my sweetheart. <laughs> Never thought she'd say that to me before. <laughs> Here we go, White Domes Road. I am so excited. This is the best part of the park, at least driving, where you get these big, vast views. Looking in the valley, the valley of fire. All right, on to our next home for the week. I think that it's going to be more beautiful than the west side. I don't know why. I could be way off. I just have a feeling. It is really pretty over here. I think it's closer to the park. We were a little bit farther away where we were on the west side. So yeah. this might have a little bit more of the red rock in the distance. Mm -hmm. When I was researching the Hoover Dam, they said that the least busiest months are January and February, which we're smack in the middle of. So we are technically in the slowest tourist season of this area. Makes sense, it's not that warm out. But compared to up north it is. Yeah, it's not bad. Especially if you get that nice like 65 plus day. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Coming up a quarter mile on Sandmine Road and we see a few RVs out there. Isn't it? Yeah, four by four recommended 15 day camping limit. So that will be interesting. 
maybe we should stop and check and see which kind of direction and which route we want to go. Something we haven't been doing a lot is checking Google Maps and getting a lay of the land, but uh, it looks beautiful out there. It's pretty intense. Just so we know which way to go, I'm going to pull up Google Maps. Okay. Decent gravel road on the way in so far. It's so pretty out here. Yeah, those bluffs are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. Even just this spot that's right in here would be great for a van for overnight. Yeah. Checking out spot number two on top of this little hill. Give us a nice view of the sunset this way, as well as hopefully looking at the canyon that way definitely different with a truck and trailer where you're 50 feet long and if you don't have the great backing skills that Chris doesn't have yet and I don't have yet frankly either um, it's not the same as just driving up there with a van and being able to turn around and come back if it doesn't look good but you have no idea what it's gonna be like so um, we're kind of being cautious so far as we have our first few months of boondocking here she comes is it perfect up there? It's perfect. It'll be a little tight, but I think we can do it. All right, slow down. Okay, a little bit more. All right, stop right there, babe. I gotta be careful not to re-sprain my ankle out here. But it's so rocky that, see those big rocks? We gotta watch out for the level pads just so they go down in a good spot. So we got five different points we were trying to figure out. Well, that's because the last place we parked at, we had our level pad on a big rock. So yeah. we're like fresh out of a learning experience. Like yeah, we didn't like that. So this is good, beautiful spot, wow. So we're having a really tough time here because the truck is at a downward slope. The way this coupler is so rounded that if the truck is forward at all, it sticks in this part of it so it doesn't release off of the, uh, the trailer. So this is kind of, I mean, the trailer is super level, but the truck is at the incline. Here you can see the, the truck angle is down quite a bit more. This is flat, but it's this point right here that it just doesn't want to release. So we're going to try this spot over here, see if we can get another level set up. And we got it! We got it! I can't... That... I don't know what's, I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's the ball, I don't know if it's where we're at. see like how much rubbing is on there. It just gets, this coupler is just so angled, it just doesn't it's like horrible. to come out of it. I was ready to go park at Walmart. Yep, Chris wanted to go get a hotel room. It's starting to get cold out here. Gonna hit the auto level and hopefully we'll be home free rough time. I don't know what's going on today. One of those days. The day started great. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like that. So that's going down to level the front. As soon as the front pads start going down, I feel much better. It's It wasn't that bad up here. It's just, it's, it's just rocky and well, you need 48 feet to kind of get level, and if the truck and trailer are too too unlevel, yeah, it doesn't work very well. But it's just too beautiful of a spot for us to not take it. I love it up here. It's great. We're on top I'm, of our ridge. Honestly, I'm afraid to get this out of here now. <laughs> I'm afraid of leaving just because, like... We'll worry about that in a week. I know. Well, we definitely nailed 
the spot. We have 360 degrees of just vast beauty. Yeah, the only thing that I think could be a problem is if it gets super windy, we might be parked in the wrong direction for the wind, but sometimes I'm a little negative when I don't need to be. We just conquered this huge thing and it is super amazing up here. Well, how do you plan for that? Doesn't the wind change direction and... Yeah, I don't know. I guess that would be like a, a local tribal knowledge, like if it's certain areas that always get it the same way. Yeah. Like, like Joshua Tree, doesn't that always go the same way? Look at that out there. We can see for probably 30 miles out there. It's so beautiful. It's just amazing. And then once the sun sets and the sunrises come out, it's going to be great. Did you pull this rock out of your boot? That was in my boot. It was? Yes. I picked up a boot. That's I mean a rock. It's so dangerous. And you know what time it is. Hey, let's get the plant house, the house plants in. It's always uh, the best feeling once you... Once you conquer your challenge and like the struggle is over and now we're in here and we blasted the heater and the setup is beginning. I did skip the outdoor setup just because like I'm beyond, I'm over it. Like, okay, I just want to get set up inside. So we're just doing the inside stuff with the exception of the rug. I did put the rug down because it's so sandy out there. So plants out, basics out, get some water cranking. And yep. Just Settle them. You didn't even eat lunch today. Nope, I didn't eat lunch today. I am kind of hungry. <laughs> I can fix that. I, that I can handle. So the incident of vertigo that I had a, about a month ago now, we think might have been partially triggered by the high winds at Joshua Tree. And that night, I think they were gusts up to like 25, 35 miles per hour. Yeah. And you, you all know in an RV, like it just, it just shakes it. And, um, you know, we're in another spot now out in the middle of nowhere where we just got a wind advisory that is starting tomorrow, but today we're having winds of 15 miles per hour and gusts up to 25 overnight. And then tomorrow it's gonna get really crazy. And uh, you saw up to like 60 miles per hour. I think that's not gonna hit us, but definitely up to like 35 mile per hour winds. And one of the things that we have is a slide out now and there's a slide topper on there. So that slide topper rattles in the wind makes this creaking, groaning noise. And I don't know how much wind they can actually handle. So we're thinking about bringing the slide in tonight, which is something I never thought we would even do. As a reminder, when our slide is in, we are able to use everything in our RV. We can use our kitchen, we can open our fridge, we can get to our bathroom. The only thing is it's tight here and we can't sit in our slide when it's in. Other than that, it's full access. So it's not horrible, just not ideal. Yeah, we'll survive. It's still shaking. <laughs> that didn't fix everything, but it's still uh, make you sleep better, maybe? Yeah. Chris was up late last night worrying about the wind. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The wind did not shake us awake last night too much. It was pretty good. It says it's 36 degrees outside right now. And the high is only gonna be 51 today. It's, this is the super windy day, so we're gonna see what this brings. But I think bringing the slide in last night was a good decision if just for the wind reduction noise so we can get a good night's sleep. But you all know that I don't have a thermometer in here yet, so I don't know what the temperatures are, but I did pick up a heat gun that I wanna play around with a little bit. It says the wall is 44 degrees. The heater didn't turn on, which is kinda of weird. 
is 46. 54 in the bed. I was kind of getting some readings around the 50s. The window shade is 44. The window is 36.9. That's a dual pane window. And we have one window, our front windshield, which is just automotive glass. It's not dual pane. Look at the difference. So that's kind of interesting because we've never had dual pane windows before. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's toasty warm in here to me. So the dual pane is actually quite a bit warmer, which is really interesting. And I noticed that because this windshield will frost over when it's really cold. I think the 20s is, is, is as low as we've been. I don't know how accurate this thing is, but kind of interesting. Our thermostat on the heater is set to 55. This doesn't make a lot of sense because if it's 45 degrees in here, you'd think the, the thermostat would be turning on, right? You would think so. Well, let's turn it on. <laughs> okay. We survived the great windstorm of 2022. Yeah, we came out like pros. You know, I think we got a little lucky. We were like on the fringe of some bad spots and we didn't get hit with the 60 miles an hour, which is great. 35 gusts is what we got hit with and that was the, probably the most we've seen. Yeah, it made a huge difference to have our slide in. Humongous difference, especially just sleeping at night. We slept a lot better. I only woke up a few times from the wind throughout the two nights. And we've got to say when this slide is in, we were getting some flashbacks to living in the van where only one of us could go through the galley at a time and we had to do the old galley shuffle. But we survived, we had some good laughs and multiple times throughout these last two days, we were just thankful that we weren't in the tent. So we did, <laughs> we did get a workout in yesterday. Right here, we took turns working out just like we did in the van. We used our bands and we would stand here and do like body anchored movements Aaron took a turn and then I took a turn and it actually felt really good to use this little space because the other part of the day we were on the bed all day long working, eating, everything on the bed. So it, it really wasn't bad to be up here and we were grateful to be able to do it. But now the wind has died down a little bit so we're going to push the slide out. It's going to feel huge in here. We're going to bring some dumbbells inside to do today's workout and we're really excited. We're going to be able to sit at the kitchen table. Could yeah, be, missed be a that day. a little bit. And I just thought about this. You know, I'm on week three now of my ankle and it's I'm weight bearing now so I can like I can walk inside very easily and I can walk outside with the boot. And what would have we done if I had these crutches? How would I get to the bathroom? You know? Yeah. I'd have to literally pogo hop on one leg to get by here and I probably would have twisted my other ankle. I would probably have to come over here and help you from this side. Hey, we could get our jugs back out from the tent. Yeah, I would have had to get you a urine container. <laughs> oh, I felt that cold air rush in as the as the seals My opened God, up. God, it's huge in here. So much room for activities. Yep. Well, speaking of cold air, when that slide was in and when it was windy, right here was super freezing, and we think it's from the wind blowing in to the fridge vent. As if Aaron needed one more reason to hate this fridge. Yeah, we could hear the propane pilot light like flicker on and off with the wind gusts. Like and, every uh, 45 seconds. Yeah, as these big, I mean, that's 35 mile per hour winds that were hitting right into that vent. And uh, that definitely made that cabinet cold. The we floor right here is freezing. Mm -hmm. Freezing. Isn't it gigantic in here? It is a crazy big difference. It's wow. insane. Wow. So much room for so activities. Much room for activities. Breakfast potatoes? Yes, my favorite thing to make 
potatoes in the air fryer are the best and if you cut them up nice and small like this you can get them done in 15 minutes and they're just so satisfying and, and they store well and they're healthy yes so healthy because they're just like a, one of the most satiating carbs out there when you eat potatoes you just feel like satisfied and it, you don't need when they become unhealthy when you deep fry them or you douse them with tons of cheese and fat and Ketchup. bacon you know like usually people are like oh that's high carb well really that's not the problem it's when you douse it with tons of fat and then it's like a caloric bomb but yes we're making some delicious breakfast potatoes and I like to put some Cajun seasoning on Aaron's they get a little spicy and then for mine I either do that or the triple salt get some truffle salt going on it I love it and yeah potatoes store so long with these regular ones you can do the french fries you can do the Hasselbacks there's a lot of experimenting that I want to do with some crispy Hasselback versions mm, those look so good I know so th there's tons yeah this is like one of my I always have one of these bins with onions garlic shallots potatoes this will store for weeks and it's just really great because you know, when you have extra power in your battery bank, just start frying potatoes every day. I love having these yoga mats in here. Yeah, they're nice to have, aren't they? Yeah, both of these. This fold-up one is great. Um, I really like it just for putting like dumbbells on or for putting under your butt for like ab work or whatever. You can kind of configure the size you want it to be to make it thicker, so that's nice. And this one's just a like super sturdy big one. Almost there. This is one of the most magical spots we've ever been to. It is absolutely amazing. Chris, are you looking for snow? <laughs> it's it's really pretty out here. It's a little bit cold, but we're just in a cold spell right now. Yeah, and definitely worth it. I mean, this is the type of uh, spot that I love. I love that you can just see for miles and miles and miles and miles, and it just goes on forever. You got beautiful mountains in the background, very little neighbors. It's amazing. It's super peaceful out here and the colors are incredible. Yeah, absolutely. It just glows at sunset. Every sunset is just this crazy glow. It is glowing. It's so cool. This is the first time that the wind has died down that we've actually been able to stand out here. Yeah, we've we've got <laughs> we've caught in the wind. We've literally been trapped inside for three days. It ended up being a three day wind event and here we are out in the real world we're actually like alive and outside it feels really good it's still a bit chilly and i hope tomorrow we'll be able to well i'll be able to at least do a little bit of a walk off site but even just walking over to the bluffs over there they're so pretty mm -hmm. yeah the terrain's a little rough for my boot i can walk around a little bit but uh it's it's very very rocky here mm -hmm. kind of a bummer I'd like to be able to, to see more of it, but we're gonna take a little cruise in the truck, uh, I think tomorrow and check out some of these trails and these roads and check out the Lake Mead National Park Recreation Area. And, uh, and see. we might swing through Overton so Aaron can get a little glimpse of the big city. <laughs> right? Yep. there's Overton.
off in the distance. Good morning, sunshine. I'm making fresh turkey sausages for breakfast. I make these every single week for myself and Aaron will eat them with me only when they're made fresh because he, he does not like leftovers. But I spent yesterday mixing up a big batch of my uh, turkey sausage seasoning blend that I have a recipe out and I absolutely love it. And I use it with bulk turkey that we buy and that way I can use my bulk meat in various ways and I can have breakfast sausages that are actually healthy for me. So I'm doing one pound of the turkey sausage flavor here and then over here I have one pound with Chinese five spice which is also on my blog and so that way I have two different flavors throughout the week. I have them every day with an egg on top and they are really good. So I'm just mixing it up and then I like to make these into two ounce patties and then that way you can grab and go however many you want. I usually have one or two depending on what else I'm having with the meal. And it's just a great way to start the day. So that's what we're doing. We have potatoes going in the air fryer. We're going to get these sausages sizzling. I have a 12 inch skillet over medium high heat and I spritz it with this avocado oil. It's 100% avocado oil, no fillers, no gunk, so it won't ruin your non-stick surfaces. And we're gonna throw them in. When I do the patties, I always start at the handle. And then I work my way around clockwise so that when it's time to flip, I know the order of how long each patty's been on there. And this parchment paper is also great because when you're trying to get the patties off, you can use it to help you lift the patties so you're not struggling in that department. How hungry are you, Aaron? Uh, fairly hungry. Usually when I ask that, he says, the usual amount. Bon appetit. Thank you. Looks like a delicious, delicious breakfast. Three and a half week update on the ankle. It's getting much better. I'm able to walk uh, fairly normal inside the RV here, but outside on uneven ground is still quite tender anytime there's too much articulation in the ankle. But uh, I still have, if you look at my good ankle here on the left side where it kind of dips in like that, and this one is kind of still pretty fat right there, it's not really like swelling, it's more like scar tissue. You can really see it if I flex my ankle up like that where I got dips inside here and then on the bad ankle. It's still kind of, it's, I don't know, it's swollen. I think it's like scar tissue, um, trying to like, you know, start the healing process. So it's, uh, it's interesting. It's going good, but it's also kind of like if I walk on it too much or if I do too much, too much exercise, it, uh, kind of flares up a little bit. So I am going to try this KT tape, which is similar to the ACE wrap bandage except this stuff goes on and stays on for like a week and it's a lot thinner and gives you the same support that an ace bandage like this will give you but it's a little bit easier to get your shoes on and off and uh, I'm figuring this is going to be like the next progression as I continue to walk and get my hiking stamina back up and eventually start running. So Lake Mead National Recreation Area is literally 
three miles down the road from here. It's like a six minute drive. We could just throw a rock and hit it. Normally we could walk there. So this is pretty cool. We've never been there. We don't know that much about it. We heard it's kind of a, a beautiful drive and obviously it goes down to Lake Mead. There's a ghost town that you gotta take a little bit of a mile and a half hike, which we unfortunately can't do. The only thing I do know about the lake is that it was created from the Hoover Dam. Yes, it's a man-made lake. That's the literally the only thing I know. That's all we got for you. Old America's Beautiful Pass coming in handy again. That's certainly one thing we get our money's worth on. Yeah, you can't beat it. I mean, we spent 30 bucks going to Valley of Fire twice, and you know, this is 80 bucks for the entire year, which we use all the time. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. So the pay area is closed. Just looking for our next left that will allow us to get down to Lake Mead. And we got a turn coming up here, which I hope will be open. Every other road has been closed. So that's called Stewart's Point. It's looking good so far. No gate. No gate. Really interesting to see houses down here. Like it feels like it's just a dead end road to the, to the lake, but <laughs> there's actual homes down here with people living it's like a considerable amount of homes yeah I definitely was not expecting that no not at all it's like a little neighborhood is it creepy down there yeah it's kind of creepy down here and that blackbird just scared the crap out of me because I guess I'm a little bit on edge what you don't know what to make of a place like this with these homes and houses Look, and it's a nice tent camping right there yeah this is a campground Let's uh, stop and use those bathrooms, but now now it turns into a campground. Like as you go through vacation homes or winter homes, I don't know what those are. It's kind of bizarre down here. So we're gonna take the beach road up on the left down by the lake and see what see what's down there. I think I see a, a couple people camping down there at least. doesn't look organized at all. No, it might be just free BLM camping. Did we see this on Camp Indian? Oh, it's soft here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. huh. It's always exciting to take a road that we know our van wouldn't be able to go on to. Yes, definitely not van friendly on that route. We but would not have made it up that hill. That van over there made it work to his spot. Time for me to get my prison yard walk in. Your 10 minutes of fresh air starts now. What do you think? I think it's really beautiful. This is kind of unique and special. Yeah, I don't, I didn't know what to think about Lake Mead and like this type of area, but it's pretty cool. It's just, it's just different. It's very, I don't know, barren out here. It's just, you know, it's just this giant lake kind of out in the deserty type of area and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so the shape of the lake, it has one north finger and then it has two east and west south fingers, right? And we're on the north finger. And I think that there's a lot less up in the north area than there are specifically down in the west, southwest, because... You're closer to Henderson. There's some towns down there that has some like services and amenities nearby, and up here there's just nothing around, like at all. And you can definitely feel that. So we've had a few people ask us about the rooftop tent, if we're gonna get rid of it, what are we doing with it? Why is it still on the back of our truck? And Why haven't we burned it yet? <laughs> we're not 
really quite sure yet. We have used it once already where we did uh, spend the night at some friends uh, over Thanksgiving in the rooftop tent. So it was really nice to have it there. And like Chris said, this would be a very unique spot to, to use it for yeah. the night. Yeah, we do plan to keep it. I think just the sprained ankle puts another, puts it on hiatus for a while. My favorite view is right here. There's three burrows out in the shrubs out there, and we don't know if they're somebody's donkeys or if they're wild burrows or or what they are. If anybody knows if, if, if those are native to the Lake Mead area. <laughs> I've never heard the word burrows before. <laughs> never heard the word burrow? Is burrow a donkey? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was driving away and I saw what looked like a horse and I stopped and I said, is that a horse or a deer? You said, is that an animal? I said, yeah, first I said, is that an animal? It looks like either a horse or a deer and then Aaron said, it's a donkey. <laughs> They're just sitting out there. Oh, there's three of them. So I said, we have to try to get closer to them. Did you read this? Oh, I skimmed it. This is one of the largest springs around the area that flows over 400 gallons per minute. Wow. Yeah. It says there's dozens of them around here that have been flowing for thousands of years. And it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit year round. Wow. That's so cool. You can definitely smell like, it's not super sulfury like some areas, but every once in a while you'll catch that whiff. Yeah. Do not submerge your head or your nose in this water, you will result in a fatal infection. That's crazy. A one-celled organism will enter through your nose. <laughs> well, there's some big ones in there. What is fun little surprising treat this little pull off was. I, I actually am like uplifted from being here. I'm in a better mood. I got a good giggle out of that whole don't snort the water. Yeah, fun, fun area. But uh, I think to explore Lake Mead properly, you need a lot more time. And obviously, like Chris mentioned earlier, we're on the we're on the, the Overton finger. The less busy side of the lake. Yeah, it'd be fun to go do the other fingers. Mm -hmm, for sure. But uh, we're going to head back, eat lunch, and we're going to call that our little excursion for the day. Yes, and just as an FYI, for, for us to get from here down to that southwest finger, it's an hour and 20 minutes down to where like those cities are. Yes, so we're, we'll probably hit that area maybe as we travel back. Through. We'll keep it in mind.